Good morning, everybody. At least it's morning for me. It may be afternoon or evening or the middle of night for you, but we're going to be talking about whatever time it is, careers in IO psychology. So what are the marketable skills of an IO psychologist? Uh, first of all, psychological testing, survey construction, and validation. Those are, I believe, the main skills that IO psychologists will use in the workplace when they're working as an IO psychologist. And they do that in the whole human resources selection and placement process. And most of the IO psychologists I know who are doing IO psych and not advertising research, uh, they are uh, doing that, psychological testing and employment selection. Of course, also there's the issue of performance appraisals, which are important in some organizations, some companies, and also equally employment, uh, employment, equally important, fair employment practices, EEOC, uh, you know, procedures. Uh, those are the major uh, skills that are used by IO psychologists who work in the field of IO psychology. Uh, of the IO psychologists I know, about 60% uh, are doing uh, psychological testing and, and selection and uh, you know, placement uh, you know, activities. Uh, the other 40% are doing employee training or some type of training. Uh, and that is you know, either in-house, uh, you are hired by a big, large company, and you go to different uh, departments to do trainings, or you work in a consultant uh, position, and different companies will hire you to come and do employment training. So most of the IO psychologists I know are either doing testing or uh, training of some type. I'm kind of leaving out marketing research, which is a part of IO psychology. Uh, you know, that's because I see that as a really different area than IO psychology. When we talk about IO psychology, we're really talking about the testing, the performance appraisal, the selection, uh, the EEOC. That's mainly what we're talking about in terms of a working IO psychologist. Uh, so you get a job as an IO psychologist. Which department will you be in? What will you be doing? Where will you be working? Uh, common uh, IO psychology uh, job titles are either a staff man, ma uh, ugh, a, it's morning, so my tongue's not awake, staff member, manager, uh, director, or vice president of personnel, uh, human resources, organizational planning, organizational development, personnel research, employee relations, training, affirmative action. Uh, oftentimes they'll work as consultants. Companies that are too small to have their own IO psychologist, when they need the help of an IO psychologist, they will con contract out to an independent consulting firm and the IO psychologist will come in and uh, do something uh, either in terms of you know, selection or training or whatever the company needs. And of course, university professor. Common places of employment. In the private industry, we have finance and banking, manufacturing, utilities, and retail. Uh, government, research and development. I guess that's where, really where marketing research comes in. Uh, unions, trade associations, and universities. Uh, the, two, uh, uh, the three IO psychologists I know the best uh, one is working for the state government, the uh, you know government, the state government of Ohio, uh, and her job is in the department which oversees the collection of data, uh, performance data for the entire state. So things from the schools, things from the different governmental offices, their performance data comes in to her office, and you know not just her office, but it's a you know a large department, and they. Uh, analyze the performance data of the different uh, departments and different sections of government in Ohio. Uh, another uh, IO psychologist I know, uh, she was the IO psychologist at a cereal company uh, where they made cereal. And so 
Uh, she was hired to do you know, the wide range of IO psychology tasks, such as employment selection, EEOC stuff, training. Uh, very interestingly, what happened was she was dealing mostly with job stress. Uh, and uh, that is a chapter that we uh, skipped in, this, uh, in our textbook because we didn't have enough time. But again, that's one area of IO psychology. And then a third IO psychologist I know, she's working uh, in a large multinational uh, engineering company in their human relations department. So if you want to be an IO psychologist, you need to find training. PSYOP, the Society of IO Psychologists, PSYOP, their top picks for uh, graduate schools in the United States are Michigan, Urbana-Champaign, Bowling Green, FIU, Akron, Michigan, Minnesota, Maryland, Penn State, and George Mason University. Uh, so if you are interested in you know, applying to one of the best programs, these are the top 10. Uh, what about the PSYOP rankings for around New York City? Uh, NYU is rank, ranked 13th, and I've had two students who have uh, gone to their master's program and graduated. Uh, University of Connecticut, uh, SUNY Albany, and Columbia are all within the top 20. What about the local, other local programs? Uh, Baruch has three programs in IO psychology. Uh, Hofstra has two programs. Uh, NYU uh, has two different programs. And then we have SUNY Binghamton and SUNY Buffalo. And not to leave out Columbia, we have Columbia with two programs. And as I said before, SUNY Albany, which is one of the uh, top 20 ranked schools. If you want to move out a little bit farther uh, in terms of geographic location, and sometimes that's possible in that master's programs, their courses only meet once a week, or that they're hybrid online courses, uh, one of my recent graduates, when she uh, went to get her PsyD in IO psychology, uh, she's doing that at a, a college in Washington, D.C. And uh, three weeks a month, they work online. And then one Wednesday night a month, they come in to meet uh, during Wednesday. So what she does is she lives here in New York City, and she works online three uh, you know, weeks out of the month, and then one night she uh, takes the train into uh, Washington, D.C. to do the in-person class. Uh, but we have uh, Fairleigh Dickinson, Keene, Montca Montclair State, Rutger Rutgers, which is nearby, Fairfield, Connecticut, Hartford, and New Haven. So Let's look at some of the uh, you know, compensations of being an IO psychologist. Uh, a lot of students, uh, especially the psychology students, uh, they think that if they go on, they'll be a clinical psychologist or they'll do counseling. So let's uh, compare the two. Uh, the medium so median salary of an IO psychologist with an MA degree is $87,000 per year. And I got this from ONET. And the growth factor is much higher than ha average, uh, which is 20%. So the government predicts that IO, the need for IO psychologists will grow by 20% or more within the next 10 to 15 years. What about clinical psychology? To be a clinical psychologist, you need to get your PhD or your PsyD. A PsyD is a little bit quicker. It's about four or five years. A PhD is five to eight years. The national median salary of someone with a PhD and doing clinical psychology is $66,000 a year. New York State is a little bit higher, and the growth is predicted to be average. Uh, let's say that you don't want to go and get your PhD. Uh, you can do counseling uh, with a uh, master's degree, a mental health counselor. Uh, their average salary is $38,000 a year, and in New York State it's uh, $32,000 or $33,000 per year. Here, the growth is uh, considered to be much faster than average. 
So if we compare the mental health counselor with the uh, master's degree in IO psychology, which is the same amount of graduate school, we see that IO psychologists uh, have a much higher salary. The business uh, students all think about going to business school. Uh, well, let's take a look at business school. Uh, to get into a good business school, you have to have uh, business experience, and that's about two to four years. And that's usually a type of management experience. Uh, so you need to have that before you can apply. Uh, then you'll have to pay tuition, and tuition in business schools are pretty high. Uh, the lowest you could probably find is around $10,000 per year. Uh, and better schools go for twenty to thirty thousand dollars per year. But as you can see, the salaries are pretty good, uh, with many of the uh, salaries uh, comparable to uh, or higher than uh, IO psychologist, a master's degree in IO psychologist. But is it all about the money? Well, what else uh, could there be? Uh, I always like to say that jobs provide people personal satisfaction, fulfillment, pride and accomplishment, uh, emotional security, self-esteem, status, friendship, and belonging. Uh, and I'm not talking about you and your self-esteem as an IO psychologist, but I'm talking about everybody. Uh, jobs are important to everybody, not just for the money, but for all of these different psychological reasons. Uh, and if a job is not working out, people are not being satisfied by these different el psychological elements. And indeed, uh, you know, research has shown that disruptions on the job lead to poor psychological, poor physical uh, you know, health. Also, disruptions on the job often lead to suicide. Uh, you know, it's a very strong correlation and when the employment rate drops and people get laid off or fired the suicide rate goes up. This is just an illustration of how important it is psychologically to people to be in a job and to be in a good job. But these benefits only come if a person is matched to the right job, the correct job. The job that meets their skills, knowledge, and ability. And the IO psychologist's main job is to match people to the jobs based on their KSAs. And so a lot of psychology majors say they want to be a counselor because they want to help people, and that's a very uh, good uh, ethic. But I want to point out that you can help people much more as an IO psychologist because while only about maybe 20 to 30 percent of our population need to see a psychotherapist, most of the population needs to work. And so being an IO psychologist, you can touch more lives and help, peop mo help more people. So there's a very strong pro-social ethic to being an IO psychologist. This gives you the opportunity to really help people. Uh, finally, even though it's not on the slide, I always like to talk about uh, the lifestyle of an IO psychologist. Many of the IO psychologists I know love their jobs. Actually, all of them do. Uh, and they, they seem just so laid back and happy and, compared to people from other jobs. And I think that IO psychology is a good job to work in. If you're a clinical psychologist, uh, clinical psychology and doing therapy is psychologically draining and it's difficult and there's a lot of negative things about the job that you may not think of. Uh, patients uh, killing themselves, patients threatening to kill you, patients spouses threatening to kill you. Uh, I know many clinical psychologists and all of them have stories like this. Also with the insurance uh, companies uh, getting paid as a uh, you know clinical psychologist is very difficult. Uh, IO psychologists don't have to worry about any of this. On the other hand, uh, business people, if you want to go to business school and be a uh, you know a business leader, well, 
you know, you have to make those hard decisions. You have to fire people, and uh, you have to cut things, and you have to tell people no, and you have to be ruthless. And you don't need to do that as an IO psychologist, but you can still be really involved in business. So there's a lot going for the idea of being an IO psychologist.